and now we're heading for Zermatt, Switzerland, one of the most beautiful towns in the Alps, surrounded by 15,000 foot high mountain peaks. For a very long time, Switzerland and the Alps have been among the most beautiful regions sought by millions of tourists from all parts of the world. They display the greatest mountains and valleys in their grandest form and have a special charm that is most seductive. The village has a relaxed atmosphere due to its small size and perhaps its southern location. Zermatt is quite close to Italy, although you'd have to climb Europe's highest mountain to get there. You can see in this Google Earth image how Zermatt is in a valley surrounded by huge mountains, the biggest collection of tall mountains in all of Europe. The best way to reach Zermatt is by train because cars are not allowed in the village anyway. There's nice scenery out both sides of the train as the train snakes its way up this long valley to Zermatt. You see occasional evidence of landslides. There's meadows with wildflowers. Many of the hotels have porter service who will meet you at the station with small electric trucks that will ferry you and your baggage directly to the hotel and bring the luggage right to your room. We're staying at the delightful Hotel Butterfly, just a couple of blocks from the train station, so it's easy for us to walk on over while our baggage is hauled for us. Nice, comfortable rooms, beautiful hotel. After the train journey, we're a little hungry. We're ready for Wurst, the national dish of the country. And how convenient at this sidewalk stand. It's quick and inexpensive, and we're on our way to explore the village. Or you could sit at an outdoor table and watch the town go by. The pedestrian streets are narrow and lined with shops, restaurants, hotels, and inns near the rail station. Homes and houses are scattered throughout, some perched on the lower edge of the mountains, and they are creeping further and further up the hill with the ongoing construction here. Three hotels stand at the top rank in Zermatt. Five Star Deluxe Hotel Zermatterhof, Monte Cervin Palace, and Monte Rosa. If you can't afford to stay there, you can have a meal or have a drink at the bar. The main church in town is St. Mauritius, built in the 1920s. But the first historical record of a church here goes back to the year 1285. Watch out for the horse carriages. You could take a ride in one, or if you're staying at a fancy hotel, you might be delivered from the rail station in a horse carriage. Some of the main stores that you'll see here are the shops for Swiss watches, clothing boutiques, and souvenir shops with everything from the Swiss brass bell to lacy handkerchiefs, Swarovski crystal figurines, jewelry, cuckoo clocks, gobel hummels. You can get music boxes and fine porcelain dolls. Bakeries are everywhere and you'll find gourmet food stores. The best buys on chocolate bars are probably in the grocery stores. Of course, there are many shops that sell clothing and accessories for hiking and skiing. And most of these stores also rent skiing equipment and the people who work at the stores can certainly help you choose the best equipment for the day if you're heading for the slopes. If you're looking for backpacks or hiking shoes, walking clothing, this little village is a great place to shop. While most of the merchandise is not made in Switzerland, it is selected by the Swiss merchants to be the very best. A lot of it's made in Germany. The quality is superb and you can't go wrong buying items in these shops. And the price is generally no higher than what you'll find in a big city. Being a small village in the south of the country, many stores close for lunch, perhaps from noon till 2 p.m. Then they reopen and close again about 6 p.m. On Sunday, it's better to shop in the morning because a lot of the shops close Sunday afternoon. You might think up here in the mountains it's going to be cloudy a lot, but on the contrary, Zermatt is the sunniest part of Switzerland. A study has shown there's an average duration of 62% sunshine. That's number one in the country, compared to number two, the Ticino in the south with 55%. Turns out the surrounding mountains keep the clouds away, so Zermatt is blessed with a very special climate. 
took a look into a typical local restaurant, the House Darioli. It's got that taverna style with the rustic wooden benches, no tablecloth, simple menu, good prices, good food. And it's also a hotel. It gets three and a half stars out of four rating on TripAdvisor. So this is a pretty good place to consider. Another excellent restaurant is in the Walliserhof Hotel. It's the Stubli restaurant, quite rustic and typical Swiss feeling. Comfortable wooden furniture and a varied cuisine, ranging from steaks and salads to pastas, Italian style. It's part of the Hotel Walliserhof, which is one of the oldest in Zermatt. It's a family operated hotel that first opened in 1898. Located right on the main street, but most of the rooms are set back. It's got 34 rooms, each one of them different. There are just three main streets which run along parallel to the river Mater Vispa, and numerous cross streets, little lanes, especially around the station and behind the church, which forms the center of Zermatt Village. In general, anything is at most a 30 minute walk away. And during the summer, there are roads and hiking trails leading up to a number of year-round restaurants. Warning, it seems peaceful in town, but they do have some wild animals on the loose, sniffing their way around, trespassing, climbing through fences. Beware the house cat. Well, it just shows how peaceful things can get when you stroll a mere block away from the main street. Things calm down right away. In the old village beside the Grand Hotel Zermatterhof, about 30 ancient buildings show the traditional style of the original Walser residence. There's barns and grain stores that are up to 500 years old. That's a piece of living history that reveals how the mountain farmers of Zermatt once lived. Notice the rocks that are placed at intervals underneath the buildings, those flat round rocks. Those are guards to keep out the rodents and the insects from the grain storage areas. The roofs of these typically valet style buildings are covered with shingles made of flat stone slabs. Their sun-beaten wooden walls are made of larch wood and stand up on stilts for storage space down below. Sometimes there's firewood stacked up down there. Sometimes animals were kept in a barn underneath the house to keep everybody warm, the animals and the people living upstairs. This section of town is called Hinterdorf and it's the oldest surviving village center. There were barns where people would thresh the grain and storehouses where they would dry their meat, slaughter their animals and store their treasures from the land away in chests. The larch wood they are made of is a kind of symbol of the Valais as 29% of the trees in the area are larches. The larch is the heaviest and hardest of the indigenous conifers. The wood is highly resinous, which makes it very durable and weather resistant. And this combined with the dark color of the wood means that the house will heat up during the day when it's exposed to the sun, producing energy. And the people who live in these houses don't need much heating in the daytime and winter, at least in the rooms that face the sunny side. The preservation of these buildings is of growing importance to the local communities and the Swiss Heritage Society, and fortunately to the owners themselves. These buildings symbolize the customs, the traditions, and farming culture at the highest altitudes in this alpine region. Throughout the country, there are about 50,000 of these agricultural buildings still in existence. Outside the village, throughout this Zermatt region, there are an estimated 720 of these so-called Hofstetten type buildings. The old town is just around the corner from the main street. It takes less than a minute to walk there, but it's easily overlooked because it's not obvious. Bicycles are allowed in town, but on the main street here, you are only allowed to walk them, not to ride them. You could get a big ticket from the local police for pedaling your bicycle down the main lane. During the day, the town is quite busy year round, but something special happens in the early evening. It gets much quieter. The shops have closed down, the day trippers are gone, the bus tour groups are back on their trains and out of here. 
and it's just left to the people who are spending the evening and the locals. It's the perfect time to take a leisurely stroll from one end of town to the other. It's only about a kilometer, so it's a very easy walk. They have a lovely public tennis court with clay courts and lights in the evening. It's mostly for locals because tourists aren't going to bring their tennis rackets, so it's a nice amenity for people who live here. Switzerland has one of the world's highest qualities of life, and they really do take care of their people. Many travelers who arrive by train just simply walk to their hotel, especially younger folks, and it's quite easy. You see the road is well paved. You could take a taxi. There's electric vehicles that can shuttle the baggage for you, but you can just walk it, no problem. We mentioned our hotel at the top of the program. It's the Hotel Butterfly, and it's a lovely spot. It's only a couple blocks from the train station. No problem walking over here. And they've got balconies, they have terraces, rustic wooden architecture, and it's set a couple of blocks away from the main street, really up on the hillside. And up on the hill, you've got sheep grazing. Very quiet spot. We'll be taking you outside the village to surrounding mountains for some amazing views and hiking and mountain railway experiences in our other programs about Zermatt. We've got a hundred more movies about other parts of Switzerland on our YouTube channel and website. Take a look.